<clears throat> All right, people. This could be cool, or it could be a big ass disaster. We'll see. So this is a a slicker illustration board, <clears throat> almost like Bristol paper, but board. Um, so the paint I'm going to use, which is going to be a combination of uh, these um, Nicholson's Peerless Transparent Watercolors, which someone recommended to me that I try, and these um, Daniel Smith watercolors that are high quality watercolor. So I have them in these palettes, these bigger palettes here. I see a little hair in there. Um, and the plan, well, and actually what I, was, I should have finished is the uh, transparent watercolors. I did a little test on um, a board of this and with water they tend to be they tend to blend together uh, maybe a little too much and they stain the board almost immediately which means you can't really change much once uh once it's on there and dry they almost are like acrylic ink it seems in that regard and the daniel smith watercolors are um just as uh saturated because they're higher quality watercolors. And it seems like on these boards, as they dry, they get a little bit more granulated along around the edges. And hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about. And then, so I'm gonna try and put a lot of water on it, um, lay down some color and some of it blend together and some of it hopefully will leave some interesting edges. And then, I was reminded by another artist post where she used some uh, uh, cling wrap to push down on the ink and then leave it there as it dries and then it picks up the directional lines of this uh, cling wrap. So hopefully that will be up in this area. We'll see. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not going to promise anything. And then once this is this part is uh, dry enough, I will go in and put in some details. While it's still wet, I might try and pull out some highlights. You know, we'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> yeah, Truman, we'll see how it's going, won't we? We'll see. I had this photograph of my friend Sabrina, an artist, a belly dancer, a bunch of other stuff, and it's just such a great image um, that I figured I should try and do something with it. Something good, hopefully. We'll see. Um, once, once it's all dry, too, I may take some acrylic ink and add little details for these various bits of, these various bits of uh, metal and stuff and jewelry and things like that. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I also don't know how long the power is going to last on the phone. But, you know, hopefully. I mean, really, I should shut up and start, right? All right, so I have a big brush, um, a wide brush, this brush here, that I'm going to put the water down with. And hopefully... In addition to the uh, areas of water in the, in the center part, it'll leave some brush strokes around the outside. But the water dries relatively quickly um, on this board. So, don't know how long the uh, effect will last. Plus, it's n not that easy to see uh, the water where it is. You have to sort of move your head uh, to see the reflection, um, you know, where the water is uh, versus 
where the water isn't. I'm just a genius man. My, my scientific terms are off the chart. All right, so got the water done. Now, I think I might even use this big brush. Oh, I didn't want to use these colors here, darn it. I got to remember which colors I'm going to use where. So I'm not going to use the Daniel Smith watercolors. On the bottom, I was going to use the uh, transparent watercolors here. Hopefully I'll be moving this board a little bit here and there, get some effects, some movement. But I do want to, well, see it's already, when you see how quick the uh, edges dry on this and how quick the water dries. Because of that, might get some interesting textures where the water's being splattered here as well. And hopefully I don't lose, or I will end up seeing, continuing to see, um, the line work that I've drawn. to tell what some of these colors are. Like I said, it's always chance for disaster when it comes to this. Also, the size is a little big. one of those things where I sort of feel like I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. I'll watch someone who I really admire who's able to do this sort of stuff. It seems effortlessly like like uh, Bills and Catch and wonder what the what's going through their head right now. Do they actually know exactly what they're doing? Or are they sort of experimenting too? Okay, before that stuff on the top dries too much, I want to try and get this cling wrap on. And then 
hopefully I can move this so there's some control over the direction of these. <clears throat> um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, polygonal shapes. Oh, I know I made the mistake I made just now without even thinking about it. I didn't use the Daniel Smith stuff up here, which seems to work better with the uh, granulated effect. So I wonder, yeah, it's still wet enough. I'm just gonna lay down some of that other paint here. Daniel Smith stuff. And we'll see if that makes enough of a difference. piece of cling wrap. A little bit bigger. What happens if, if I can think it through and explain it correctly is <clears throat> some parts dry a little faster than others when this stuff's pressed into it, which ends up leaving um, those shapes. So while that's happening, <clears throat> I feel like. I want to try and um, pull some of the paint out of a certain area. I can't, don't even know if I'm going to be able to see it correctly. trying to pull a little paint out of the belly area so I can sort of define that shape although I might I might put some paint on the outside out here to do it I don't know I might even add some um, opaque light color there And Happy New Year to anyone that comes by and says that. I might not see it because I'm kind of wrapped up in this sucker here. Judging from the little mistakes I've already made so far and what paint to put where, um, who knows if I'll be able to <clears throat> do what I sort of had in mind for this. And like I 
said the uh, these transparent watercolors stain the surface really fast, which means it makes it harder to pull out the highlights like I'm doing now. I just try and get some water on the brush and then <clears throat> soak up some of the, the paint here and squeeze the brush between my fingers between applications so that uh, I get out, you know, I get it on my hands here, I, I get the uh, paint out of the brush. But these transparent watercolors, they don't, they soak in so fast, it makes it harder to do this technique, I can see already. Some of these lighter areas will, if not, be pulled out. Oh, that was dumb. I should have gone in that direction. If not pulled out to reveal lighter color, then hopefully I can add a little darker color here and there to contrast the areas that I want it to be lighter. At least I can see some of the still, I can still see some of the pencils like the face and stuff which is probably the most important part. On a totally different subject, I've been having a lot of fun watching this Misfits series, binging it more or less. I think I'm on season three now. I heard some people initially say that it, the quality dropped off a lot once the original cast started one by one moving on to other things. Um, mainly though that seems to apply only so far to the uh, the actor who went on to, went on to Umbrella Academy, because the other ones are all still in. And they have the guy who's really good in Preacher. I think he's Irish. I don't know. So I'm having fun with that. So you can see these shapes here. So hopefully the areas that are pressed in, you can tell, have more color and the areas above um, are lighter and there are actual lines around those areas. Hopefully, I think I gotta leave it alone and just let it uh, dry for a while. I'm still trying to lift off some areas here. If this was regular watercolor, you probably would be able to lift off a, at least a little better, even on this um, board that dries so quick.
it's all sort of intuitive, you know, and that doesn't mean it's going to be right. <laughs> it just means, okay, maybe this would work. Oh, maybe that will work. I know it will work now. A drink. Hey Steve, yeah, Steve said aren't all uh, watercolors transparent? Well, to different degrees. Some colors within the same brand are more transparent, it seems to me. And then the transparency always also um, changes to some degree from brand to brand. But these transparent watercolors may be m more... Uh, at least in practical purposes, more a dye than a watercolor. It's sort of like the old uh, Dr. Martin dyes, which are transparent watercolors. Um, and in practice, I can tell, like I've been saying, that these transparent watercolors, at least on this board, don't lift out very well. You can't get back to the white or even much of a white. You can see I was trying to do it here and I only got a little bit lifted off. Even though I, and you can only do it so many, you can only do it so long before the board starts to like come up in little tiny pieces and you don't want that. So I'm just gonna have to be happy with this. You know I may even go in and add a layer of color around the figure to try and bring it out more. Don't know. We're gonna see. <clears throat> And in fact, I doubt that I'm going to be able to get this done in one application. <clears throat> one thing I think I'm going to run do is get the blow dryer so I can dry some of this a little faster. So hold on a minute. <laughs> And there'll be a little bit of noise, being a blow dryer and all. All right. In this room, I need to find a way to plug this in. <laughs> There's not a lot of plugs. All right, I think I'm gonna have to unplug one of these lights, at least for a minute while I dry this, so it may look a little different. Still one light going.
see if this actually left behind what I was hoping it would. Looks like it did to some degree. You can see this stuff up here did something. Thanks for uh, sharing. Anyone that does that, that's always a, appreciated. <coughs> so now, I've got to decide <coughs> what to do next. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I can start by defining some of these shapes in the face, but which medium to use, which watercolor to use, and what colors do I want to use too? I don't know <coughs> from experience either <coughs> how, uh, what the reaction will be if I float um, a darker version of this on it. Will it be sort of granular and kind of ugly? Will it be soft? I, I don't think it's going to be that. But one thing I'm going to run do is get some fresh water because it's kind of an ugly color right now. Looking at my computer screen, I don't think you guys you might not even be able to really see the drawing that much in here. Because it being relatively big here but small on the screen, I guess depending on how big your screen is. <clears throat> One thing that will obviously define a lot of this will be the hair, because it's pretty dark, at least in the original. So I probably could start with that. That would help. Maybe I'll do that. <clears throat> Try to see if the, I could get a violet by mixing a red and a blue in these um, transparents, and it made basically a, a grayish purple. So <coughs> I guess what I will do is let's check these Daniel Smiths and see. <coughs> What mixing a little blue and a little red will get. Sometimes you assume that it's going to be the color you want, like a violet, but 
did pretty much the same thing here, just more of a, a grayish color. But I actually forgot that I actually have a violet of these Daniel Smiths. So I think I will start with that. Part of the reason I dried this with a blow dryer is because I'll end up getting my hand on it and there's still a few wet spots here that I have to watch out for <clears throat> a day or two. Although, if I'm going to paint this pretty dark, I better check if uh, applying this to the face will enable me to get some uh, darker versions of this. some really soft blending might not be working as well as it would usually. But that's okay. I keep saying how much I admire people who end up with sort of a loose um splotchy, for lack of a better term, effect. So I should try and embrace that myself to some degree. Right now I'm listening to Talk Talk. Some intense harmonica action going on right now. I don't know if the model Sabrina is watching or if she hasn't gotten my message and is out doing stuff. But hopefully she'll see it later. So in general, what I'm doing now is <clears throat> adding a little uh, paint to any given area and then uh, as is what I tend to do naturally, um, adding a little water uh, around the edges of the color to soften on that, even though it goes against what I was just talking about a minute ago where you have um, more uh, 
painterly approach, sort of splotchy. This this stuff is actually doing it. And really, the, half the time, that's the whole reason I want to work on a surface like this, this sort of smoother surface, because uh, as opposed to a more watercolor surface, a little rougher, where the paint can spread out and have soft blends, this ends up with uh, a little more painting, a little bit splotchier kind of effect. So alternately, I'm whistling along with the with the uh, harmonica tones, which is probably pretty grating on your ear. So I'll try and remember not to do that. I'm gonna do it right now, though. So beautiful, wasn't it? Wasn't that just sugar for your ears? thing that will be a nice a bit of detail to be adding at the end is there's light coming some a harder light coming from this side so there'll, there'll be some highlights around this figure so at least on the right side of the figure I'll be able to <coughs> get a little definition the other side is just lighter period so um, I might have to add a little opaque uh, white or some opaque color on that side to have a light light shape against the darker. And so I might have to add some dark paint on the left side of all this splatter stuff and a left side of the figure to define the figure more. So it's a little bit harder to see my drawing. One thing I did um, when I drew these hands, and it's no uh, comment on the lovely Sabrina fingers is I lengthened the fingers a little bit more. I actually didn't even make them as long as I wanted to. I wanted them to be almost unnaturally long, but I didn't quite do that.
got sort of a, a big raggedy brush right now. <clears throat> it's just easy and covers more ground and hopefully keeps me from trying to do too many really tiny details yet, you know, trying to still think of the bigger ones, the bigger shapes. You know, and maybe I'll leave some of these splotchy areas. Sometimes you, you end up working on a painting that in your mind is just going terribly. Right now, this one is not going terribly, but I think it's probably too early in the process to really think how, how it's going at all. But um, one thing that I remember telling the, the people in a, in a class that I was teaching um, uh, acrylic pouring is uh, you're, you're going into this, you're in the middle of the process and you think this is not going the way I wanted it to. And so naturally you think you're failing and it's failing but I would tell them, and it's, you know, it's kind of hard to apply this to myself sometimes, so I can understand the way they would feel. But I, keep, I keep, kept telling them, you're seeing the painting from the angle of what you expected, what you were trying to do. <clears throat> and then you see the end result as uh, maybe failing in that regard because it didn't turn out the way you planned. But the person viewing the painting, not having worked on it, you know, not knowing what went into it, not knowing what was expected, all they see is the finished painting. All they see is the final results. So they might say, wow, that's really cool, that's really beautiful, blah, blah, blah. While you're thinking, oh, that's terrible, that sucks, that didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Um, one thing I can see right now is uh, this blending here is not going the way I would like. But I've got to get past that and listen to my own advice. What a concept. Oh, I still gotta see if I can find my. Oops, I probably shouldn't use that color, dumbass. Um, find my drawing here, my drawing lines. So that I can see what I'm, where I'm trying to put the shadows and such. So, 
three people watching. That's better than the last time. Possibly because I haven't really done many of these lately. Now I'm going to go to a smaller brush because I'm going to go ahead and do the lips here. Just because I'll, there are some times when you just want to see an area finished because it'll, it'll make you feel like you accomplished something. So I'm using um, a violet right now as the darker version of the lips. end up I can see that I'll end up going in here and uh, <coughs> probably adding a few little white highlights
listening to low. Once I get this hair and it's going to start to help a lot. But I'm not ready yet. Ooh, now it's Tom Waits. You'll have to wait till yesterday is here. That's the song. You'll have to wait till yesterday is here. For today's gray skies, tomorrow's tear, you'll have to wait till yesterday's here. <clears throat> Today's gray skies, tomorrow's tears. You have to wait till yesterday is here. Do do do. Today's gray skies. I am doing it 
disservice to Sir Tom. the way you want it. And now it's the great Tim Buckley. I was lost without a song. God, I gotta get a better brush than this one. The melody. You've done. Sort of jumping around all over this painting as I see fit because I can. Four people on light, an all-time recent high. I'm going to do something around these hands. I might lighten it with some yellow or something. It's some sort of, you know, energy kind of thing going on. But I'm still, I should still keep working on things like this hair. Get this more, more of this done. 
What kind of idiot is going to sing along to Tim Buckley? You're going to come out sounding terrible no matter what, fool. This is where you gotta be extra careful. <clears throat> when you're filling in a dark area that's defining the outline of something as important as the side of the face, if you screw that up, you're in deep doo-doo. 
we can look that up. With this uh, particular brand of color where it doesn't lift up and you can't really get rid of it. Once you get it down, it's not good to make a mistake. I've got to sort of remind myself I have to look at the reference relatively close to get an idea of what's where, since it's hard to see the drawing in some of these darker areas. Hanging by a thread. And I also am going to have to cheat a little to define this cheek, or it's going to look a little funny, like this is this deciding it here. Okay, got some more hair to do on the right side.
one thing that's a little tricky right now is even though his hair is really dark technically there are several shades of this hair where there's some shadows here and there that are darker than the actual dark color of the hair. Hey, well, there were seven people there, so you guys feel free to say hello if you like. It's always good to have some uh, interaction when, when it works out.
thank you, Beth. I'm glad someone's loving it. I never know about these things until I'm done, and even then, sometimes I don't know. See if I can add a little uh, snake detail. Hey, Nas, thanks for coming by. Appreciate it. Whether it's a masterpiece or not, that's not for me to say. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. 
So the one thing I'm going to do, maybe a little early in the process, but I want to define something here is that left arm. I think I'm going to make this color a little more saturated. And on the outside of this arm. a little bit. So that helped a lot, and I, it still looks relatively uh, random. All of these things are just reveries. Now I'm going to do the same in another area. I've actually known Sabrina for a long time since, let's see, we both worked at Sony Online in San Diego when I first, well, a little while after living in San Diego. So it was probably, well, I know when it was because it was around 9-11 actually. It's from um, 2000, 1999 to 2001. And we both worked there for a while. And now I'm listening to a great cover of a Tim Buckley song by This Mortal Coil. Oh no, yeah, right, right. Or Dead Can Dance, one of the two. I think I'll do a little 
detail work here up in that neck. Brennan Perry has such a great voice. The girl without it. Not that I must have been blind. Some of this detail will just be sort of hinted at, those little, little brush strokes here and there. Yeah, it looks like we're keeping a relatively steady interest. That's nice. Now I think I'm going to do the same thing on the right side that I did on the left side. So I need to find this little bit here. see which colors I want where.
I got some good old Mazzy Star coming up. And this thing's taking shape, more or less. Now, I think I'll start adding some of the dark areas down in this skirt. I have to go around some of these shapes. Now, I'm probably going to paint around some of the bigger shapes and then uh, add the other, one, other ones in with some opaque um, color later. Otherwise, it'll, I don't know, it'll, for lack of a better term, it end up, ends up looking too artificial when I paint around everything. And the tricky part I didn't get around to saying that was that um, the color changes, you know, from this reddish hue to a bluish one as it goes further to the left. And down here, too. Ooh, and now it's sheer water with a really good song of theirs. And if there's a little bit of 
bleed through in the, these colors, that's okay. It'll, as long as it's not too bad, it'll just add to the effect of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. can't tell my, my phone how much power I have left. I guess when the feed just stops, I'll know that that's too much. You've gone beyond your limit, sir.
Interesting. Mm -hmm. 
it's getting there, sort of. Yeah, it's coming along. where I added this color to define this. It actually created some new kind of neat splotchy effects. So every once in a while, it goes the way you hope it will. And now, now it's, it's gotten to the point to some of you where I can start um, thinking about how to pull out some highlights of things. And also wondering if I should do a little bit more to define some of these areas, like right here. And then I can reinforce some of the uh, granular areas to try and make this stuff that I'm doing now um, merge with everything here and not just make it look like I added a big splotch of color. <clears throat> Getting to the point now where I can start thinking of adding some highlights. And there's some Springsteen from an album that I really, really like, uh, the Tom Joe album. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So what I'm doing now is it's showing me that I need to heighten the contrast um, between the hands and the background because I think the hands along with some other areas are the, whoops, 
that I don't want. They have a focal interest, the focal points. Mermaids weren't there. Sweet silver mermaids. On the fire, Trafalgar Square. Sweet silver mermaids. Mm -hmm. Oh, down to two people. Oh, no, everybody's leaving. Don't leave me. Okay. I think I'm going to start to add a few highlights here and there. And for this, I will end up using some acrylic, liquid, liquid acrylic. These FW inks. I think I'm going to get some fresh water though, so this white isn't corrupted. Don't corrupt the white. Okay, got some fresh water. Now let's see where I want to add some of these little little highlights. Weren't there? since it's watercolor some of these little areas are going to interact with this white and make it a combination of whatever colors there and white which I don't particularly want but it's just gonna have to deal with it deal with it dude Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 
I'll probably do some kind of weird effect up here too once I get all this done. Mm-hmm. 
So right now, I'm going to add some water up here. Don't know how much it will interact with the various watercolor bits that are here, but what I'm trying to what I'm going to try and do is 